Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is November 12, 2014, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, as gun ownership in America increases, murders and other violent crimes drop to a 45-year low. Meanwhile, police killings register the highest in two decades. Plus, D.C. schools strip Christmas from the calendar after Muslims complain. And Rob Dew takes a look at the unseen forces behind the latest Nickelback CD. Ugh. I can't believe I'm doing a Nickelback video. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We hear a lot about violence here in the United States of America, but it turns out that according to the FBI, we're at a 45-year low. The FBI reported that the number of murders and non-negligent homicides fell last year, 4.4% to about 14,000, the lowest total since 1968. The murder rate has also been dropping and stands at 4.5 per 100,000 population. Firearms were used in 69% of the murders in 2013. But it's still my understanding that you're more likely to be stabbed, uh, punched to death, or uh, beat with a hammer than you are to be killed by a uh, fully automatic firearm. But then begs the question, why are they trying to ban the fully automatic firearms? I, I guess they have nothing better to do. And we'll talk more about firearm deaths in one second. But for right now, let's go to FBI.gov and take a look at the chart. And we start in 2009, and you can see all the way down to 2013, there was a stark drop in violent offenses. But, you know, because we have a lot of 24-hour uh, coverage, we have a lot of uh, citizen journalists, we have a lot of social media, you hear more about things that would, you know, 20 years ago be a local news story. And talking about the FBI, don't forget that they put down a zero sum for the murders in Sandy Hook. Could be a glitch, I'm just telling you that it happens to be there. Now let's talk more about these, uh, these shootings and talking about specifically police. Police killings highest in two decades. The number of felony suspects fatally shot by police last year, 461 was the most in two decades, according to a new FBI report. The justifiable homicide count, contained in the FBI's annual uniform crime report, has become increasingly scrutinized in recent months as questions continue to be raised about the use of lethal force by law enforcement. And not just lethal force, but also the supposed non-lethal force, the tasers, the, uh, the pepper spray, the sound cannons. We've seen repeatedly people being tased and having a cardiac arrest going into seizures people who could not comply with the officer's wishes because before being tased, they had some type of uh, health condition, and then so, you know, they're having a seizure, whatever, then the officer tases them for noncompliance. Completely ridiculous, you know, what if you pepper spray somebody with asthma? They could suffocate to death, but, you know, that hasn't stopped them from using the, uh, the non-lethal alternatives, and there's also a graph that you can see on InfoWars.com, the justifiable homicides involving the killing of a suspect, suspected felon by law enforcement officer in the line of duty. And while we see a lot of police shootings, there's also a lot of violence on our border. And now we see our Border Patrol agents being disarmed because of equipment malfunctions. Border Patrol agents say agencies' gun recall puts them in danger. Nearly one-third of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection's 16,000 M4 carbine rifles were tested by the agency's Office of Training and Development, which determined that more than 2,000 had the potential to malfunction. But in the meantime, Border Patrol agents are dubious about the department's claims given that the guns manufacturer, Colt, has not issued a recall. And they said they don't want to pull their weapons, they don't want to have to share a weapon with a friend, they don't want to have to uh, potentially go out unarmed. And you think about the Border Patrol, and people say, well, well you don't want the, the police and the military and all these feds to have a monopoly of force. I don't want that. But also, when we look at the border situation, we see that the, uh, the opposition of the Border Patrol, these cartels and these other uh, insidious entities, are fully armed, and they got a lot of those weapons during Operation Fast and Furious. So we'll take guns away from the Border Patrol, and you know maybe they do have some equipment malfunctions, but they need something to defend themselves in the interim. But meanwhile, we're shipping guns to Mexico with Operation Fast and Furious. It makes no sense. You know, we'll, we'll arm these guys and then take away the weapons that they need. To, uh, the Border Patrol needs to the defend themselves. It's completely ridiculous, but that's what's happening on our border. But a little bit above the border, Texas. We see uh, some potential good legislation coming through in the state of Texas. We see Texas lawmakers introduce bills for both open and constitutional carry. These bills, to include two addressing open carry and a third for constitutional carry, are backed by Republican lawmakers in the wake of Governor-elect Greg Abbott's public announcement last week to sign such a measure 
should they make it to his desk in Austin. And it says these are entered into the early sessions to be uh, looked at in about two months. If you guys have been paying attention to the news, you've seen in Texas a lot of open carry marches, people walking around with shotgun rifles, uh, black powder pistols on their hips. None of those things are illegal to carry in the state of Texas, but you can't carry a pistol on your hip and you can't carry a pistol without a concealed carry permit. And these laws are looking to change that. And to all the people who are anti-open carry, they don't like these guys going to Starbucks or wherever else they may go, you know, would you feel more satisfied if these guys didn't have an AK-47, but they had, you know, uh, you know, a, a six-shooter on their hip? You know, would you be more confident with that if they had a Glock or something that's not as ominous as a, uh, as a rifle? Of course, you know, I have no issue with people carrying around uh, pistols or shotguns or whatever else. You know, that happened here in the city of Austin. They locked down a school for part of the day because a guy was transporting a, uh, a shotgun from his apartment down to his car. And they're like, oh, what's this guy going to do? He's probably going out duck hunting. But everybody completely freaked out about it. And talking about the freaking out here in the city of Austin, let's talk about some freakouts in D.C. D.C. school strips Christmas from calendar after Muslims complain. In a 7-1 vote, Montgomery's Board of Education removed references to Christmas, Easter, and others from next year's school calendar, replacing them with ambiguous terms, such as winter break and student holidays. The decision was made after complaints by Muslim parents that the Islamic holiday of Eid wasn't being recognized. But here's the thing about this. You know, they want to say it's discrimination, it's culturally unsensitive. Okay, I'll hear out that argument, even though I'm a Christian and I'm very much pro-keeping Christ and Christmas. But this is where it gets a little murky because you don't want to recognize Christmas. But in the next line it reads, however, the school district's failure to allow students time off for Eid led to the equality for Eid to accuse the educational authorities of fostering inequality, which is to say the equality for Eid wants you to recognize their holiday, but not the Christian holiday. And whether you call it Christmas break or winter break, it's the end of semester break, just like when you have summer break. You can name that after some holiday, but it's still summer break. It's the end of the semester, uh, whether you call it something or not. It's just how the system rolls. Feminists demand censorship of Princess Leia catcalling parody video. Do you truly belong here with us, Mother Class? This little one's not worth the effort. Come, let me get you something. Station to pick up Allow me to introduce you to my aide, Lobos. Say something, man. Damn it. And of course, that's a parody video of a video that was previously shot of the young lady walking down the street and uh, being catcalled by multiple people. And the only thing about that video, I understood the point that she was trying to make. There are some guys who are definitely out of line, guys who are just walking around staring at a butt. That's completely uncalled for, unnecessary. But they kind of ruined their argument when they put in guys that just said, hey, how are you doing today? Or, you know, it, you, know you have a nice day. And I'm like, well, is, is that supposed to be sexual harassment, just talking to somebody in a very benign way? I say, you know, have a nice day to the person at the grocery store. That doesn't mean I'm sexually harassing them. And let's end tonight with this, uh, this segment, the harassment of our laws here in the States because they can grow the opium in Afghanistan, but if you get caught with it here in the States, then you're going to jail. We have Afghanistan opium harvest at record high as NATO withdraws. The United Nations Office of Drug and Crime said opium production was up by 17% since last year. And of course, a lot of the opium is still being grown in a southern province where British troops were stationed until October. So yeah, we've seen the, the footage, the guys on Geraldo, you know, we don't like it, but we have to do it, or, or you know, they'll get mad at us. It's completely ridiculous, you know, because they'll, they'll grow it out there, they'll help uh, grow it, help the farmers do whatever they got to do. But if you get caught with it here in the States, you're going to jail. And on that same note, let's talk about a little bit of different dope. We have a dope interview coming up with Rick Ross, the real Rick Ross. He's going to talk about his connection to the CIA and also what he thinks about the rapper, Rick Ross. And then after that, we'll have a very special, special report by Rob Dew talking about the new Nickelback album and how it relates to tax-free foundations and he has some special unseen footage of one of their marketing meetings. Stay tuned. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. Hi, I'm Dr. Group. Today I'm proud and excited to announce a new product to the InfoWars Life product line. Introducing the first proprietary oxygen-based intestinal cleanser, Oxy Powder backed by real FDA-approved phase one, two, and three clinical trials. People are suffering from all kinds of digestive issues these days. 
All the toxins from the air, the food, the water, everything that you're exposed to on a daily basis ultimately ends up in the gut or affects the gut. My main focus was to come up with a remedy for this, something that's safe and effective that anyone can take on a regular basis to keep their intestinal lining clean. You have over 30 feet of intestinal lining that can be compacted, that can be toxic, that can be full of parasites, fungus, bacteria. What are you doing to keep that clean and flushed out? My recommendation is to clean your intestines at least two to three times a week to prevent the toxic buildup from going into your bloodstream. You owe it to yourself to take your health into your own hands and start cleansing your body today with Oxy Powder. Secure your Oxy Powder today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency, Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. For a limited time, we are offering 15% off Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality at InfoWarsLife.com. Rick, uh, other points you want to make, and then I know you want to get into hip-hop, that you say uh, is the new crack cocaine epidemic culture war machine. And then I've got some amazing testimony I can give you uh, on that exact uh, fact, backing up what you have to say. Tell folks what you told me off air. Well, I, I believe that what they've done is they've taken hip-hop and they've made it glorious to be a drug dealer. You know, when I sold drugs, I hid I didn't want anybody to know I sold drugs. But now they got these guys who've never sold drugs, technically, you know. One guy was a correctional officer who goes by the name of Rick Ross now. He, he took my whole identity, and the court said that he could do it, that he could prance around the country and say that he's me and take my whole life and, and use it, and, and there was nothing I could do about it. I can't stop him. He even grew a beard just like you. <laughs> Everything. So now they take these guys, and these guys say, well, I got to the position that I'm in right now today by selling drugs. So the message that it tells our kids is that if you go out, you sell drugs, then you can become a great rock star like myself and never go to prison. And I think that that's a false message to be given people who feel hopeless. And notice they don't indict the people that are fake and claim all that. No, no, they want them out there like a lantern fish has that light to get the little fish to swim over so they can eat them. Exactly, and that's what I believe. I mean, if if I would have ever, if I would have gone on tape and say, oh, yeah, I sold 300 kilos of cocaine, and, and now you got me admitting that I did that, they would indict me for it. But the way they're doing it now, they're saying it's just art form. It's just a form of art, and I believe that it's it's sucking in our kids, and, 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 and you know, you turn on the radio, and it's, it's, it's just filled with it. And on what do you want to say to Rick Ross? Because you'll probably see this video. Well, the fake Rick Ross. I would tell him that it's time to change, uh, that it's time to uh, tell the kids the truth, you know, and let them know that um, technically he's never sold drugs and that he didn't get his money from selling drugs, that Universal gave him the money to do the things that he's doing, that it's okay to, to, to admit that, that, that you never did that and not let our kids believe that they can go out and sell drugs and never pay a penalty for doing that. Does it make you angry to see him doing that? Well, really, uh, the whole culture. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm disappointed in the whole culture. Really, not, not really him, because I don't think that he understands what he's doing. Uh, to him, I believe that, that he's making a living, and he's almost like I was when I sold drugs. 
So he don't understand the... But you were actually doing it and taking the risk. He's out there selling this culture and this idea where young kids are going to go out and get their lives ruined or killed. In my book, that's a lot worse than what you did. It, it, it possibly... At least you had your butt hanging out there. Yeah, and, and they're, they're getting it to, to maybe even more people than I did. I mean, you know... Well, notice, though, even though these guys are fake gangsters, they're always getting shot up and killed because real gangsters come after them or other people that think they're gangsters come after them. It's totally sick. It is, it is. But then, you know, you go to our schools, and, and guess who you hear on the radio? Uh, uh, playing on the, in, in a high school gym on the, on, the, on the turntables. Guess who you hear on the... Jay-Z. Well, I'm glad you're speaking to high schools and colleges. We need to get you to just thousands of them. We need to shut this down. Well, you know, it is, and, and, and you say that, that it's, it's harder for me to get in with my message than it is for them. They'll pay these guys $100,000 to come there and tell the kids how much drugs they sold and how glorious it is to sell drugs, and they don't even want me on campus. Because you're going to tell them it's the government, it'll ruin your life, don't touch it. <laughs> and by the and way, you're going to go to prison forever if you don't. And it's that message that'll keep kids off drugs. Not the one of, oh, it's sexy and fun. You, know, you want to get involved in this. This is how you really start rolling and getting all the chicks and everything. No, you're not going to get any of that. You're going to end up getting TB in a prison cell. Exactly. And, and, and get your lights cut off at 7 o'clock at night. <laughs> Told when to get up in the morning, when to go to bed. And how to live your life. It makes me sick. And they're going to give you a job. Or oh, you can't get a job on the street? Oh, well, they got a job for you in prison. It's called Unicor. And you're going to make money. Prison money. 25 cents an hour. And the job that you're going to be doing? Skillful job. Because people on the street, well, they get $35 an hour to do that same job. But we're only going to give you 25 cents. But that's all you need. Because we're going to feed you. House you. We wash your clothes for you. You have nothing to worry about in here. And then the good old boys sit around going, I hear they got hot tubs and cable in them prisons. I say make them work. And then they wonder why their son or daughter can't get a job in a factory because the factories are all built on the side of the prisons. Absolutely. For 25 cents an hour. Yep. And then they charge you as much as 50 cents a minute for a phone call. So you got to work two hours to talk to your wife or your girlfriend or your son or daughter for two minutes. Yep. Absolutely. And then, you know, visits, they only let you visit twice a week. It is such an evil plan. And then you may be like I was, you know, where your family is in L.A. and they got you in Texarkana, Texas. So you may only see your family once a year, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. You look like you're about to cry thinking about all those kids getting sucked in by those spiders run by Universal and all the rest of them. I mean, they're, they're, they're setting up webs to catch kids and put them in that prison. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you know, they, they got what they call now. I just spoke at the, uh, a conference uh, in San Francisco. They call it from uh, Head Start to the prison pipeline. So they say they can tell right now. They got people that say they can tell right now a kid that's in kindergarten if he's going to prison. Well, I read a report, it was in mainstream news in New Mexico about two years ago, that the biggest prison corporation in the world was financing security at the school and was there admitting they're preparing those kids to go to prison. That the whole thing is just an induction pipeline right into the prison. Yeah, it's crazy. I can't believe it. I mean, how would people stand around and, and, and go for something like this here? I can't do it. Well, there are people like Professor Griff and others that are exposing what's happening in hip-hop. Yeah, yeah. I spoke to Professor Griffin. Uh, we plan on doing some things together. Yeah, he's a really great guy. Uh, Army veteran, really smart guy, trying to expose what's happening. Well, you know, the record labels are not going to touch those guys, though. Even though they're the real pioneers of hip-hop. Absolutely, but he can't get a record on the radio. Totally underground. It's going to be up to us, you know, the people in the streets. Like, you know, what you're doing right now. I mean, mainstream won't touch me. They won't give me an interview. They won't talk to me. A drug dealer in, in my studio? Never.
another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Grew. Today I'd like to talk about the war on women. You've experienced and heard about the benefits of super male vitality. Now, the new formula has arrived. Introducing the new super female vitality. I have specifically designed this formula to help the body naturally regulate itself without the use of artificial hormones. Key ingredients chosen from the highest quality sources. Each of these ingredients works synergistically with the female body in order to maximize overall vitality. You've heard the reviews and the feedback on how the original super male vitality has revitalized relationships. Now, both the man and the woman can have the revitalization in their own bodies with super male vitality and super female vitality. Secure your super female vitality today from our limited stock at InfoWarsLife.com. <sighs> I can't believe I'm doing a Nickelback video. <laughs> Well, it looks as if the apocalypse may finally be upon us. Nickelback is releasing their eighth studio album titled No Fixed Address, which will feature their new single, Edge of a Revolution. That's right, the vanilla Walmart rockers from Canada are telling you it's time to stick your fist in the air and call for a revolution. The lead singer, who now looks like actor Tim Roth, who borrowed a jacket from Bruce Springsteen, says the song touches upon the fat cats on Wall Street and inspired from current events as the war in Ukraine and how the government treats its citizens. But before we analyze this anthem for the people, written and produced by the biggest corporate rock act of the last 20 years, let's enjoy another snippet. What do we want? Oh, we want change. And how we gonna get there? Revolution. Feeling inspired and revolutionary? Well, I have to admit, the song is pretty catchy, especially with that anthem at the end, and that video editing is really slick. But let's look at the inspiration for this song. As we've been pointing out all along, George Soros was involved in the coup in Ukraine, and he even admitted this in May to CNN's Fareed Zakaria. Zakaria asked Soros, first on Ukraine, one of the things that many people recognized about you was that you, during the revolutions of 1989, funded a lot of dissident activities, civil society groups in Eastern Europe and Poland, and the Czech Republic. Are you doing similar things in Ukraine? Well, I set up a foundation in Ukraine before Ukraine became independent of Russia, and that foundation has been functioning ever since and played an important part in events now, Soros responded. Sorry, Nickelback, but I don't think a billionaire and admitted Nazi collaborator is interested in freedom or change or whatever the hell you're singing about. And as for the Fat Cats on Wall Street reference, the video flashes Occupy over and over again throughout different parts of the video and seems to be paying homage to the Occupy Wall Street movement, which started back in 2011. Its origins can be traced to the anti-consumerism magazine Adbusters, who have since claimed they had nothing to do with it. Basically, the Occupy movement was started by foundations in order to take the heat off the end the Fed movement, which was gaining steam with the people. And when the Obama administration could not control the movement, it was attacked and decimated. And I'm not attacking the people who had participated in Occupy Wall Street. There were a lot of good people involved who saw the system sucking off them. But capitalism is what built the foundation of this entire society. Now, it's not perfect by any stretch. But when you have the government picking winners and losers, you will never have freedom. You will only have tyranny. And what we have now is a festering fascistic system called crony capitalism.
So you have Nickelback paying homage to two foundation-funded fake movements. What do you expect from a band who sings mostly about strippers and drinking? And if you think foundation-funded movements are harmless, look into the Carnegie Foundation for International Peace. One of its first moves was to lobby Woodrow Wilson not to end World War I too early so they could fundamentally change America. Now, Nickelback did get it right with how the government treats its people. They mentioned the NSA. And recently, an Obamacare architect got caught on tape saying the stupidity of the American people got Obamacare passed. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. And for years, we've been documenting the rise of the police state. While I was watching the Edge of a Revolution video, this is kind of how I imagine the song and video were inspired. Hey, marketing team. We gots to get a new album out for the remaining Nickelback fans that are left. Any ideas? Well, people seem to be into revolution. Even our blue collar fan base is angry. Yeah, revolution. That's a no brainer. Uh, Mr. Moneybags, my cousin used to be in this thing called uh, Occupy. Occupy. Yeah, add that in the video. We'll make people think our corporate rock star cutouts really care about the people that have this vanilla rock forced on them. I'm getting visions of more records being sold and more money in my bags. I like money. Uh, Mr. Moneybags, no one but trendies and DJs buy records. Techno, that's it. The next Nickelback record will be techno. <laughs> Enjoy your corporately created revolution. Brought to you by the 2011 number one musical turnoff and the band that was voted the second worst band of the 90s, Nickelback. And to all you Nickelheads out there, before you start writing in the comments telling me how much you hate me, read a little bit about the tax-free foundations in the links provided below. You just might learn something. And this is Rob Dew for InfoWars Nightly News and InfoWars.com. If you are watching this on YouTube, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. The new album drops November 17th. So get ready for an onslaught of vapid Nickelback songs to flood corporate radio. <laughs> and that's it for our show tonight. But go to the InfoWars shop and pick up a copy of Rick Ross's new book, Freeway Rick Ross, the untold autobiography available at the InfoWars shop for $19.95. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson broadcasting from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. Celebrate the spirit of 1776 with the George Washington brass belt buckle or this incredibly sharp looking 1776 hat. Badass. And be sure to check out the new arrivals at InfoWars Life, where you can prepare your body to perform at peak levels with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine, Super Male Vitality, and Fluoride Shield. And wake up, America. Immune Support Blend is the healthy choice for the gourmet coffee lover. So get incredibly high-quality, freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.